So hi, hello, welcome to Unacademy Foundation Classes. Yes, we are in 9th live daily. So today we'll be talking about diversity in living organism. Yes, we are in lecture 8. So before starting the, uh, starting the classes, what you have to do? Download Telegram app. So <clears throat> once you download Telegram app and type this URL in the browser. So by doing this, you are able to connect me. You are able to ask me doubts regarding different topics of biology. At the same time, you can also get guidance regarding the different competitive exams. And one more important thing, yes, about the Unacademy Learning app. So if you are able to download this app, so it's better to download because you can take the subscription and you are able to get access to the different courses. So in the courses, we'll be discussing about diff different competitive exams. So it can be NTSC, NSTSC, NSCJS, NSO. So how to take the subscription? So first download an Academy Learning app. And once you download an Academy Learning app, you are able to save the screen. Okay. And then go for the plus. So when you click on the plus, you are able to see the different exams that uh, you can appear. So NEET, AIMS and GMAT, ILETS and Foundation and NTSC. So click on Foundation and NTSC. So when you are able to, when you are able to click Foundation and NTSC, you are able to see the screen and then click on Get Subscription. So when you click on Get Subscription, you are able to see different month subscription. So one month, three month, six month, 12 month and 24 month subscription. So if you see 12 month subscription, you have to pay 1458 per month. Okay, so you'll be able to get 58 percentage offer if you're going for the 12 month subscription. So again, if you use foundation live code, if you use foundation live code, you have to pay 15,750 rupees per year. Remember, this is for a year, not for, for a month, right? So what is the benefit of this foundation and NTSC uh, courses? So here you, you are able to get access to different, uh, I can say, competitive exams classes. So I'm taking up for NSCJS and NTSC biology. Okay, so other educators also are taking different, uh, I can say, courses for different competitive exams. So if you are thinking to go to coaching classes, you have to travel. So travel expense will be separate. And again, coaching classes, uh, I can say fees will be separate. But here, if you see 15,750 rupees per year, it means that it is approximately 43, 46 rupees per day. So usually we spend that money to the travel expense. But here the travel expense is no, you don't be, uh, you won't be able to, you know, you won't be, uh, you won't have to travel anywhere. You just can sit at your home or any place you want and listen to the classes at the same time you are able to interact with the educators okay and not only one educators you will be having lot of educators who are teaching different topics okay so nobody tell nobody tell you to watch only their uh, their sessions you can listen to any one sessions okay so there are a lot of a lot of options under foundation and NTSC so take the subscription as soon as possible because you know the exam is al already some of the exams uh, I can say application form is filled right and exams also most of the exams comes under November so how many months you have got only hardly two months right so take the subscription as soon as possible so let's quickly start the class on yes diversity in living organism lecture 8 <clears throat> so <clears throat> uh, we have talked about different phylum in the previous classes so today we'll be talking about phylum chordata so what are the phylums that we have talked in the previous classes Yes, we were talking about under animalia. So under animalia, we have seen Porifera, Cylentrata or Nidarians, right? And Platyhelminthus, Ascalminthus, Anilida, Orthropoda, Mollusca, Echinodermata. So today we'll be talking about Chordata. So Chordata can be divided into Vertebrata and Protochordata. Okay, so where do we belong to now? Where exactly humans come under the classification here? Under vertebrata, right? So again, under vertebrata, vertebrata is divided into different subphylum. So what are these subphylum? If you are able to see Agnatha and Gnato, Gnathostoma, uh, Gnathostoma, okay? Yes, so we'll be discussing about each and every, uh, I can say the categories here in the coming slides, okay? Yes. So talking about starting from the phylum chordata. So chordata, if you see here, they have got what? 
Why the name chord data? Because they have got no toe chord. They have got no toe chord. So what is this no toe chord now? So no toe chord is a hard rod like cartilaginous cartilaginous what tissues it is not a real cartilaginous but it is a hard rod shaped structure which is important for the support okay and these animals have got the animals which belongs to phylum chordata have got four important key features so what are these key features these key features are having notochord dorsal hollow uh, hollow nerve cord pharyngeal slits post anal tail so notochord we know it is a hard part of our body right so first of all this notochord is uh, not exactly present in i can say throughout our uh, life cycle okay so <clears throat> in certain organism you are able to see this notochord can be uh, you know found in throughout their life cycle or life stages but this notochord is important for the support okay so if you compare ourselves and with a cockroach okay so which is stronger we are stronger because we have got we have got notochord especially we have got a skeletal a skeleton system that is different but usually the organisms which comes under chordata they are stronger than the other phylum because of the presence of the notochord and coming to dorsal hollow nerve cord so what is this dorsal hollow nerve cord means so <clears throat> in the case of humans so the dorsal nerve cord dorsal hollow nerve cord is able to give rise to central nervous system or brain okay pharyngeal slits pharyngeal slits so pharyngeal so these are nothing but the slits which is present in the pharynx okay post anal tail so this is nothing but the tail okay so if you are able to see in this diagram about different part okay post anal tail which is nothing but a tail right pharyngeal slits in the pharynx right dorsal nerve cord is present between dorsal nerve cord is present above to the notochord so notochord is present between what nerve cord and gut gut region okay so notochord we know dorsal nerve cord we know nerve cord so we know we know we have got a well developed nervous system so how exactly this well developed nervous system will be arising from the dorsal nerve cord okay so these are the features of phylum chordata so under phylum chordata we are able to see again different classification that is protochordata and vertebrata we belong to vertebrata right so protochordata proto means what primitive chordata they are primitive okay so <clears throat> let's see the features of uh, organisms which comes under protochordata okay so big uh, actually to talk about protochordata let me tell you in your ncrt hemichordata um, hemichordata also has been given under protochordata but protochordata is uh, i can say hemichordata is actually classified apart from the chordata it is not actually considered as a real chordata but in your ncrt hemichordata is given under protochordata of the chordata so we'll be talking about why exactly this hemichordata is separate from the chordata in the coming slides okay so talking about protochordata we know all of the organisms after annelida they have got bilaterally symmetrical body triploblastic and coelomates fine so this is common features and talking about where exactly they live right so habitat so they are marine organisms this is why we are not much aware of organisms which comes under protochordata so if you are able to go to scuba diving you may be you may uh, see these organisms but otherwise you won't be able to see these organisms around us right so other features about protochordata so protochordata have got notochord of course right but these are uh, not actually present in throughout the life cycle of all the organisms okay so notochordata at least at some stages during their life cycle okay but in some of the organisms uh, i can say cephalochordata which comes under protochordata 
So there we are able to see this notochord, uh, I can say notochord present throughout their life cycle. Okay, so what is this notochord? We have seen in the previous slides as well. What is notochord? So notochord is a rod-like support structure, which is like a string, string-like structure. Cord means what? String, right? So that runs along the back of the animal, okay, separating the nervous tissue and the gut. So this is what notochord. So pharynx is perforated by gill slits. So we have seen pharyngeal slits. Pharyngeal slits is nothing but pharynx perforated by gill slits, right? So pharynx we know. So if this pharynx has got slits, it's called as pharyngeal gill slits. So absence of cranium or brain box. So Presence of cranium or brain box or skull, we are able to see under vertebrata. But here, under protocordata, we can't see any, we won't be able to see any skull, okay, or brain box, okay. And post-anal tail is present. So, we have seen post-anal tail, tail here, right? Post-anal tail. So, post-anal uh, tail is present in all the organisms which comes under protocordata. So, let's quickly see the examples. We'll understand the example. But talking to protocordata before to that, let's see about hemicordata. Okay. So, because balanoglossus is given under protocordata uh, in your NCRT. So, let me tell you why exactly hemicordata is not a Chordata. So, it is being uh, kept separately actually. So, hemi means half. So, they are half chordata. So, if you see the features of chordata, okay. So, chordata has got dorsal nerve cord, whereas hemi chordata has got epithelial nerve cord, okay. So, if you see here, they have got dorsally curved genital wing. So, there is no dorsal nerve cord and these are worm-like organism. Okay, so this is about hemichordata. So, let's see now the examples of different uh, organisms which comes under protochordata. So, again this protochordata can be divided into cephalochordata and urochordata. So, what is the meaning of cephalochordata, cephalo, head, right? So, here notochord is extended from the head. So, in these organisms, we are able to see notochord throughout their life cycle, okay. And example is amphioxus and these are called as fish-like organism. Why fish-like? If, if you see the organism here. So, doesn't this look like a fins? So, we know fish has got fins, right. So, here Organisms which comes under cephalochordata is also called as fish-like organisms, right? So, notochord is present throughout the life stages. So, coming to urochordata. So, what is this organism's urochordata? These are also called as tunicates. So, tunicates means they have got thick, thick cell wall, not cell wall exactly, thick covering, body covering, thick body coverings. Hence, tunicates. Fine. So, example is herd mania. And these are bag-like or sac-like organism. Okay. So, notochord is found in larval stages. Okay. Not throughout their life cycle. So, this is about urochordata. So, there is one more very interesting example under urochordata is salpa. So, here the body of the organism is gelatinous. Okay, and they are able to form a colonies. Yes, this is a colony of salpa. Even I, I got doubt when I was searching for the images of salpa. I thought this is some bottles. Exactly, it looks like a bottles, right? Because they have got gelatinous body and they are able to form a beautiful, uniform colonies, a circular colonies like this. This is nothing but each, each bottle-like structures, whatever you can see here, these are nothing but salpa, okay? Yes, very simple, quite interesting as well, right? So, these are the organisms which comes under 
urochordata we have seen previous to that we have seen cephalochordata so these comes under protochordata under chordata so now we'll be talking about vertebrata vertebrata so vertebrata what is the meaning of vertebrata has got vertebral column vertebrae so what is the importance of this vertebral column so we'll be seeing about the features of vertebrata so body is bilaterally symmetrical triploblastic true coelomates and differentiated into segments head thorax abdomen right and we have got specialized tissues and organs right so this is about important feature of vertebrata and coming to the importance of the vertebral column so they have got we have got vertebral column so what is the importance of this vertebral column it a uh, vertebral column which runs from the head to the tail along the dorsal side of the body yes vertebral column is in the dorsal side right dorsal side here so this runs from the head to the bottom of the body towards the dorsal side right and dorsal nerve cord and paired gill pouches are found so what is this dorsal nerve cord spinal cord right so <clears throat> again this spinal cord is very much important because it is protecting the spinal nerves which is present in the dorsal nerve cord and paired gill pouches in the case of humans if you consider lungs are paired gill pouches right and vertebrata endoskeleton includes a cranium skull we know we have got skull okay to enclose protect the brain right so Uh, for the example if you want to remember or if you want to remember the features of vertebrata remember humans as an example because we know all of these are found in us as well right so these are the features of vertebrata so coming to the again vertebrata is divided into gnatha and agnatha okay gnathostoma and agnatha so what is this agnatha agnatha means jawless organisms so under vertebrata certain organisms they have got vertebral column but jaws are not found head is found cranium is found jaws are not found so examples we'll be seeing the examples later so agnatha means the one which does not has got jaws predicted to be the first vertebrates oldest known fossils so agnatha is a uh, oldest known fossils have no fins no scales and no jaws okay skeleton is also cartilage we know we have got bones right skeleton system is made up of bones but here agnatha they do not have bones but instead they have got cartilaginous skeleton and body is characterized by having an elongated eel like body circular mouth yes so they have got eel like elongated body circular mouth without jaws yes and slimy skin okay of course body should be supported by notochord because this comes under chordata right so these are the important features of agnatha so coming to example what is this just now we have seen circular mouth can you see jaws here we can't see jaws is it it's it's not a jaw right so example is lamprey and hagfish so you can make out the body is very slimy right so they have got slimy body but of course they will have a notochord but cartil cartilaginous skeleton system yes so these are the features of agnatha so coming to the gnathostoma so these are so including us we belong to gnathostoma so we have got jaws right so now we'll be talking about ourselves we'll be seeing the features of ourselves so <clears throat> they have got two well formed jaws 
the mouth aperture in all members of these groups so we have got what two well formed jaws upper and lower jaws right and paired and in some cases jointed appendages are also what are these appendages limbs right so some of the organisms has got jointed appendages but some of the uh, types we can see pair of appendages we have got pair of limbs right pair of legs and pair of hands so again uh, if you want to remember the features of agnathostoma remember humans as an example it will be quite easy for you okay and calcified bony skull cranium is found so vertebrae are the characteristic features of agnathostoma so again we have got vertebrae right so vertebral column has got vertebrae and bony calcified skull or cranium brain box which is able to protect the brain all fishes amphibians reptiles birds mammals all of this comes under gnathostoma right quite simple so we have seen the features of gnathostoma agnathostoma agnathostoma agnatha right and vertebrata because vertebra under vertebrata gnathostoma and agnatha comes so we'll quickly see the classification once where exactly we belong here right so we know phylum chordata is divided into vertebrata and protochordata so under protochordata cephalochordata and urochordata comes so hemichordata is considered not as a true chordata hemi half chordata right so hence we have not written under uh, protochordata or chordata right so we have seen the features of urochordata and cephalochordata okay so notochord is extended from the head vertebrata we belong to vertebrata again vertebrata is divided into gnathostoma and agnatha so we can see in the case of gnathostoma or gnathostomata which bears jaw we belong to gnathostomata so again it has been divided into tetrapoda and tetrapoda and pisces so tetrapoda means what bear limbs it bear limbs so we have got limbs so again we belong to tetrapoda so under tetrapoda again it has been divided into mammals apes and reptiles okay so if you see fishes do they have limbs no hence they have been separated under pisces whereas tetrapoda we have got limbs okay yes most of the organisms under tetrapoda has got limbs so amphibians reptiles apes and mammals so we belong to mammals so again pisces pisces is divided into class ostictis and chondrichthys so ostictis means what osteo we have seen in the previous classes osteo means what bones right bone osteo bone cells osteoblast osteoclast so bony fishes are nothing but osteoctis so chondrio chondrichthys chondrichthys we have seen chondriocytes in the previous classes when we were, when we were talking about connective tissues so cartilaginous tissues uh, i can say chondriocytes are nothing but the cells which are present in the cartilages right so chondrichthys is nothing but cartilaginous fishes right quite easy very easy to understand the i can say a uh, different classification here very easy right so we have seen about protochordata uh, urochordata cephalochordata and vertebrata again under vertebrata we have seen agnatha example act uh, actually example also we have seen under agnatha right hagfish we have seen lamprey right so subphylum we have seen important features of gnathostoma we have seen correct so <clears throat> these are the important features of different organisms so what you have to do now please like the video subscribe to our channel and please share the video among your friends so let everyone get benefited by these videos and the classes 
and please let me know if you haven't understood anything okay so please let me know in the comment you can ask doubt in the comment but better is connect me through the telegram already we have got approximately 300 students in the telegram channel the group so please connect us through the telegram so that i will be able to clear your clear your doubts regarding any of the exams even your board exams if you have got doubts regarding any of the topics any of the question you can ask me through the telegram okay so one more important thing you will be able to download the pdf okay so whatever things we have discussed you are able to download the pdf notes as well so you have to like the video as a support because each and every like is important for us and don't miss to click the bell icon so that you won't be missing any videos so whenever we are uploading the videos you'll, you'll be able to get the notification right so please click on the bell icon as well and like the video subscribe to our channel and let me know if you haven't understood anything so i will be able to clear your doubts so but comment in the comment box not in the live chat okay so thank you so much so let's discuss about more topics more super classes and classes in the coming classes fine